case four is now we're getting into some other sources of nerve injury and some can be traumatic and some can be iatrogenic. And that's often what we're seeing as peripheral nerve surgeons. And in this case, uh, this is a patient that was referred uh, to us uh, after undergoing a posterior cervical decompression infusion at an outside hospital. And then immediately after surgery noted weakness in the right deltoid and biceps. Now, one of the complications of a posterior cervical fusion uh, is something called C5 palsy, which is an um, idiopathic sort of weakness uh, of the deltoid and biceps uh, with unclear etiology, but th that tends to improve. So for this reason, uh, it, was a, it was presumed palsy and brachial plexitis, and it was monitored conservatively for months. And then at six months, there was still no improvement, and they finally got a CT myelogram at that point, which showed screws traversing the foramina, injuring the nerves. And so at that point, it was referred to us. EMG at Hopkins showed uh, zero motor units in the deltoid and biceps. And uh, we treated this patient with a double Oberlin nerve transfer. And then at six months, we found that the patient was improving and continuing to improve. Now, the Oberlin nerve transfer, it's a, you know, we've, we've spoken about the AIN to ulnar nerve transfer in the setting of severe cubital tunnel uh, syndrome or severe you know, ulnar nerve injury that causes intrinsic function. The Oberlin nerve transfer is another workhorse nerve transfer to restore function for elbow flexion specifically. So in 1994, Oberlin et al. showed that by transferring an ulnar fascicle to the biceps branch of the musculocutaneous nerve, you can restore elbow flexion. In 2001, a subsequent publication uh, showed that a double Oberlin with the uh, modification being that it's not, not just taking ulnar fascicle, but taking ulnar and median fascicle and plugging it into both the biceps and the brachialis branches and the musculocutaneous nerve uh, can lead to potentially even more reliable and superior function. And the way that the Oberlin nerve transfer or the double fascicular nerve transfer works is it's an incision here in the uh, uh, medial aspect of the arm, uh, in the bicipital groove, subcutaneous dissection, identification of the musculocutaneous nerve under the biceps, identification of the median nerve, and then, uh, and then taking the a fascicle, in this case, uh, of the biceps, a fascicle of the biceps, which comes off of the musculocutaneous nerve, plugging it into the median nerve fascicle uh, to restore function. And here's another illustration that was done uh, by our illustrator at Hopkins, Ian Sook, showing the transposed uh, musculocutaneous nerve branch, specifically the branch of the biceps, uh, being plugged into a fascicle of the ulnar nerve in a traditional uh, single fascicular Oberlin transfer. Here again, showing that same thing, take, opening up the epineurium of the ulnar nerve, identifying a uh, fascicle uh, that goes to the wrist, flexes the wrist, and taking that fascicle and plugging it into the uh, biceps branch in order to restore elbow flexion. And looking at meta-analyses and review articles, one can see that compared to other nerve transfers, the Oberlin nerve transfer uh, tends to be one of the workhorse nerve transfers because it is so reliable and so successful in restoring function, that at least anti-gravity and even more um, uh, in terms of elbow flexion. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.